come to Ellenbrook, a city so bland its main landmark includes a copy-cut shopping centre that looks like McDonald's during a midlife crisis, except it doesn't have the excuse of wanting to avoid tax by pretending to be a restaurant. Ah, cuisine. In fact, the McDonald's in Ellenbrook looks less like a McDonald's and more like a suburb in the Bronx. Ra Nominees must have been a big fan of the hit sitcom The King of Queens. King of Queens. Chicken Treat's got the right idea though. Just put stickers over the windows. Ah, advertisement stickers. Destroying the purpose of windows since their inception in, I assume, the 1960s. Enjoy a trip at the AFL store where you can pick any jersey colour you want as long as it's West Coast Eagles. And if that isn't wackos for smackos enough, try the Swan Valley Cuddly Animal Farm. I'm not kid. Ding. Perfect place to break up with your young girlfriend in high school because your young mind realises that relationships require work and being a kid you really hate chores. You know, come to think of it, you're a bit of a chore. No. We'll have our revenge soon. Who's on in the real cage? He's ready to declare war, that's what he's ready for. Experience the wonders of this incredible American-inspired nightmare built on floodplains and yet still not enough water fountains. Only half a European country from the CBD and surrounded by gorgeous floodplains. Wait, did I say surrounded? I meant smack bang in the middle. Sydney is known to other Australians as an architectural hellscape grey crumbling buildings, costing multiple life savings to deposit and a completely unmanageable traffic situation that makes you yearn for even the dumbest forms of public transports like mechanical dinosaurs. Wow, whopping four kilometres an hour and likely owned by this guy. The real reason I couldn't cross the border to WA during the pandemic was because I was riding this bad boy across the Nullarbor. Got hungry pretty quickly. I was fighting the border village kangaroo when I got the call. West Australian border gone. No. Is there a place that can even compete with Sydney? Well, yes. Do you want to hear about it? No. But you are anyway. That's on you. Look at the views on this video. You're an unfortunate minority who evidently made this choice actively. YouTube has spent over a decade perfecting the algorithm to act like smooth butter to your senses, giving you the most comfortable content possible. And you spat, you spat directly in the face of all that work of the world's most talented internet builders by watching this video. You horrible, horrible person. Well, sponsorship out of the way, let's talk about Ellenbrook. That's right, I'm in the studio to finish this because the last thing you guys will want to see is my head cut in half. That again, actually, no, yeah, that is something you guys would want to see, but I'm not providing that. The whole video footage was fucked up is what I'm saying. So, Ellenbrook is a northeastern suburb of Perth, notable for its distance from the other suburbs of the city. No one wants to hang out with it after all. Being a whole 30 kilometers from the CBD, which to my single Tokyo viewer may seem not that bad. Hey, there are no anime goals hanging around, so how bad can it be after all? For any other place on Earth that is quite a trek, and was. Giant dinosaurs don't have air conditioning, you know. Founded in 1994, much of its development push happened around the 2010s, tricking older millennials into believing the place would be cool and hip. Hey kids, you wanna be hip and cool? Before trapping them away from all that is fun and enjoyable, like major shops, conventions, and weird crazies protesting in the street about harvesting organs. It's the new RimWorld meta. The now shining goal of this out of the way arrangement building is to become Perth's very own South Headland, an ungodly satellite town that curses its existence every single day and living proof of Sisyphus's displeasure with existence. I mean look at its shopping centre. Don't you think the guys who built the style of building every day in every uninteresting nook and cranny of Australia would think, ah, 
Now it's time for the magpies to feast on me entrails. <laughs> my favourite time of the season. No! No! Don't sue my head! I needed to think up more bright ideas! This suburb is an ambitious attempt to get everything that is bad about Perth and knead it into a doughy texture of the promiscuous floodplains. People using their feet to travel in Ellenbrook is more rare than using those same feet for an OnlyFans account, which, unlike common sense, is that common these days. Yep, got them Ellenbrook toe beans right there. Who wouldn't want these bad doggies? Oh boy, I call that one red and that one tucker. My god, does the West Australian want to promote this suburb? Every accessible article about this town that isn't about a tragic murder abduction is about how great the property prices are there. $500? I beg your pardon? I'll take $500. God knows why that is the case, but nonetheless, if not even the mighty West Australian newspaper can get to the bottom of Ellenbrook's affordability, what with their undeniable history of groundbreaking journalism that really gives you faith in a tetrarchy of the state's media apparatus, then I don't think we could ever figure out its financially separate mysteries. It's a sort of gimmicky question that I expect from the worst newspaper in the country, the West Australia. <laughs> This town is the physical embodiment of shitty Australian country music, of a terrible white picket monstrosity, of fading homes rusted by iron water with no backyards. The liminally identical nature of the houses leads one to believe they are the back rooms turned up to a mildly warm 47 degrees Celsius. Still moist as Ellenbrook has high risks of flooding. This place is the back rooms. If it was an American dream, but you misspelled dream as ream me the rat. Hmm, yes, peak male body, 47 celeriac degrees of hotness. That rat from Blatatui. I swear this suburb is an Australian attempt at simulating the United States. It can't quite do so perfectly as when there was a shooting at someone's home, the residents were unable to even compute what the sound of a gun was, so went through the next most patriotic explosion by assuming the blasts were fireworks going off for the 4th of July. I mean, look at these sorry excuses for houses. No backyard, no primer, and no oxytocin either, as Ellenbrook has awful rates of depression. Source? Someone on the internet told me. You too can tell me unsubstantiated information online in the comments or on my Discord. This lifeless, brutalist hellscape, when not looking like your first attempts at a decent Minecraft house, puts the Perth CBD to shame in its crude architecture. In some respects, I am glad I don't live in Sydney where deteriorated building standards have led to modern apartments getting destroyed as soon as they're built. But looking at this place, I sometimes wish the same applied here. As these monstrosities people call four walls need to be wiped clean and purified from the earth. I ain't spending any more time in this bloody house. I'd rather be ripped to shred every six months in North Queensland. That's my true Sisyphean ethic. So imagine you move in from over east. You are sick of the prices and problems of New South Wales and fair enough. And you get some really affordable homes in a lovely sounding suburb called Ellenbrook. You travel 30 kilometers from the airport to get there. All you see? Faded brown houses, no backyards, and clearly depressed millennials with eight year old children, and probably those droopy earrings. This is purgatory. This is hell. No one's going to save you. The deposit has been paid. Ciao.